Hi everyone, this is Ida of Created to Create. Welcome back to my channel. If you are not 18 years or older, this video content is not intended for you. I am super excited, you guys. Um, as you all saw, I had released a die that I created or that I designed and I had it made into a die and I needed help with that. But in the process of doing that, it, it does get costly. So I learned how to make my own uh, files so I could have my die. I learned how to format it so I could have a die made out of any of my ideas. So today, my first, very first die that I designed from start to finish uh, came in today. And I want to share it with you guys. And it's not a beautiful die. It's... It, but it's very practical for what we do. And I have to tell you that this die came about usually when I, and I always tell this story, uh, but before I go to bed at night, I'm always in my mind, I'm talking to the Lord before I go to sleep. And it, it, it was just a thought that popped into my mind. Well, the next day I got up and I said, let me do it. And it didn't take me very long to design it. And I had it made into a die. Now, I, I ordered all the packaging and everything for it. The die got here before the packaging did. I was very surprised how fast it got here. And I did cut it out so you guys can see. That's why I have this box. Um, I just made an 8x8 eight eight box for... This is like right in time for the holidays, you guys. For any sort of gift giving, any swaps. If you want to bless somebody, whether it be with edible... Uh, you know, things that you are that you create, that you're good at, whatever talent that you have, to just embellishments or gifts, give, just gift giving in general. So I'm going to share with you what I came up with. I just created a craft colored box and I did line it with an old uh, paper from, it's, it's two, three years old from uh, Michael's and I still had some left. So I decided to go ahead and make it a Christmas. Right here is my my bow die, which is uh, the all wrapped up corner pocket die. And that is what it looks like in the back. And I, that's what I use to do a pocket right here. Here's my bow all layered up because the bow does come all layered up. And I added just a little tag I found in my stash. Someone gifted this to me. I think my friend Nisha gifted this to me in a little uh, Christmas embellishment box. These flowers were gifted to me as well by uh, Boots. Hi, Boots. And then here is my pocket die that I used right here. I didn't add any foam in between the layers, but I did uh, give it some shape with a bone folder. And just I added one of the cutout panels to put in the front of the box. Now, this would be great if you have one of those bigger machines that you can cut a window in it. That would be perfect. But and I do have one, but I just didn't do it here to show you that it's beautiful regardless. So I did cut out some uh, notches right here or thumb index so I can be able to open the box. But my base is out of craft color. So I'm going to share with you the inside of the box. So the die is not a box die. You have to create that on your own. What I create, what I designed was the dividers that go in the box and I kind of went through my stash to see uh, what I had in here that would fit so I could divide it now the one thing I can tell you that the dividers are eight inches long and my base is not quite eight inches because I made my lid first and that one was eight inches so I did have to take scissors and just snip just a little tad off the ends but Here's how I divided mine. I took out some embellishments. Some were gifted to me. Some were created by me. But let's say you want to give somebody flowers. I remember, I don't know if it was last year or the year before, I gifted uh, Miss Joanne. Hi, Miss Joanne. Some uh, poinsettias that I had created. And I was trying to make dividers because, you know, we do things in different sizes. And I don't even remember how I did it, but I wanted dividers in it, and I did. I never in the life of me thought about this until that one night that I was talking to the Lord that this idea popped up. And this is typically what you would find in um, the 
uh, to divide uh, like your sock drawer and stuff like that. But these are dividers. Here are my dies that the cut cutouts are an inch apart. So that way, if you're doing something really small, that you only need a little one inch cube. Or if you're doing something lar larger, it depends on where you uh, intersect them, how big your sections are. And I did design them in two sizes. These are the two inches right here, the two inch dividers and they are eight inches long so you are going to need a full or an extended plate to run them not because they're wide but because they are long and I wanted something that was a good size I didn't want to create a little six inch die I wanted something that was a really really good size now although these look the same they're not the same so you get one these two come in a set the cut apart the cutout right here is different so this one's longer and this one is shorter the reason for that is so that when you crisscross them when you crisscross them they sit they're flush on top so when you're creating these remember if you're using this one on the bottom then this is going to be your top crisscross so just keep that in mind and um, two you want them to be strong so I suggest that you cut them out with heavyweight paper. And the reason these are a little bit wider, the cutouts, because I wanted to give you enough room that you could layer decorative paper on either side of it. And again, that adds to the strength of your dividers. So that's why I designed these like that. And um, as you, I'll show you my box in a minute. Now, if let's say you didn't want you weren't using all the slots and you wanted to cover them up. The only thing you have to do for that is cut your strip as wide as your paper and then measure from the edge of the cut to the, whatever edge you're not using and just add your strips to it and uh, to cover up these, these slots. But they really don't look bad. And uh, you, I'll show you my box, but they don't look bad. By the time we fill it up, you don't even notice that. But anyway, the, the slits are different. So I did the two inch ones, and I'm sorry, these will be on the website later on this evening. You will be able to go in there and order them, but I'm not gonna ship them out until the packaging and the labels come in for them. They haven't come in yet, and I'm hoping within, within the next day or two that they'll be here, but I'm not gonna send them out until they come in. They will come in in pockets, in the dye pockets that we like to store our dyes in, and they are going to have a, whether it be a strip of magnet or a whole thing, I'm not sure yet, but they are going to be on magnetic shims or strips. That way they stay in one place. And then I designed the second one and I made it shorter. This one's an inch and a half. So, you know, depending on what you want to do, how hot, tall you want the box. I created my sample to be a two inch. I don't think that's very tall, but sometimes when we're making embellishment boxes, this is perfect, you guys. For those of you who like to do embellishment swaps and embellishment boxes, and you can't find those boxes at the dollar store, you can create your own box and, and use this to create your dividers. Now, the beauty of making it out of paper the uh usually when you need to change either you buy a divider box and however the dividers are if they're one piece then you can't move them the beauty of these are that you can move them and those that you can get that you can move the dividers you get things that slip under that the beauty of making it out of paper that once you have your configuration the way you want it you can actually add glue to the bottom of your strip of your divider uh, strips and that way nothing can slip underneath and migrate to the next section over and you can do the same on the side you can just add glue and hold it and it won't move either so that's the beauty of having it made with paper and i do recommend that you do a thick uh, strip and then of course a decorative paper on either side that doesn't matter how strong that is but your main centerpiece 
it is better to do it with heavyweight cardstock. Now, I just went to my stash and looked for things that either I had created a long time ago or that somebody created for me. And that way I could fill this up. I didn't want to come on and share an empty box with you guys. So some of these are from swaps and some of them are things that I have actually created. So as you can see, even though they have the cut aparts, the slots, they don't look bad. I mean, this is like really, really practical. I think that you guys will love the way it looks. Again, if you wanted to cover up the slots, you would just cut a strip of paper, you know, the size of whatever you needed it to be and just glue it in place. And that would cover up the slots as well if you wanted you know, if you didn't want to see the cut aparts that you weren't using. But for me, they don't bother me at all. I didn't add shred or anything to this, but how gorgeous would this look with some beautiful uh, shred in it and then your embellishments. Anyway, guys, you, you, I am going to share with you all some extra ones that I made. So here are some extra ones that I made, and I did cover them in designer paper on both sides. So if Let's say I had something smaller here and I wanted to divide it. All I have to do is put it in between and make sure that the slots, that the slots, I hope you can see this, that they slide into each other. And because of the way they're cut, they will be able to sit flush. And they won't, if they were, the slots were the same, your, um, your paper right here, would not be flush but because one's shorter and one's longer the minute it sits at the bottom then the top is flush so that's why i created these like that and two you can you can you know because you have the die you can create layering panels for them to cover up the you know when whatever cardstock you're using just to make it sturdy or they probably would cut a light um like a light chipboard like a cereal box chipboard these would probably cut that anyway that is what i wanted to share with you guys i am super excited about this because i think this is something that we all need in our craft rooms and again the links are not in the will not be in the description box below when this video goes live but check back later and uh and they're going it's going to be there soon i do have a limited quantity but again like i say if these do well and they go out of stock i can always reorder them so anyway guys that's mm -hmm. all i wanted to share with y'all and um I hope that y'all like what I created and, and I think that this is something that we definitely need in our craft rooms. Thanks for watching. I hope everyone has a great day and God bless. Bye.